going to explain some of it to you in just a minute. What I really want to talk to you all about today, though, is edification and building up. People, it's real easy to tear something down. I'm going to start out talking a little bit about a day that this country will always remember. 9-11. Yeah. It took 21,436 people to build the towers. That's, that's the people that actually worked on it. That's not including the people that built the steel, that delivered the stuff. This was how many people, from the, from the starting of the plans till they moved the people in, it took them to build the World Trade Centers. It took them all four years. They started August 1968 and opened in January 1972. That's the second building they opened in January 1972. Well, it took 19 militants. Also, they had set over 7,400 pieces of equipment. Now, I'm talking about not hammers and drills. I'm talking about equipment, forklifts, cranes. It took 7,400 pieces of equipment to build it. To build that building. All that time consumed. Four years. It took 19 people with evil in their heart. 38 minutes and two planes to destroy what it took 21,000 people to build. People, it's easy to tear somebody down. That's right. And especially if they're trying to work for the Lord and do things for the Lord, and you're coming back behind them, bite, bite, backbiting, and, and cutting down what they're doing, that's so easy to do. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder to stand in the truth with them and say, I'm here for you. Right. Let me pray for you. Let right. me help you. Now, we're not always going to agree. We found that out in this church. We're not always going to agree. But we can always agree to get along and lift Amen. each other up and Amen. understand where we stand and understand where they stand. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care who it is and what it is. If it's not this, if I can't stand on this, I'm not standing on it. That's right. If Amen. it's not the true word of God, I'm not going to stand on it. I, I want you to understand, though, if you ever have a problem, a question, and I'm not going to tell you I know every answer. But I know where it's at. I may not be able to give it to you right then. But I will pray for you. And I will help you. And I will try to edify you. But like I said. We're all in this together. I hope you all understand that. We truly are. <laughs> and it's getting to be that we're going to be a smaller and smaller group. As it gets closer and closer to his coming. Because he said there's going to be a falling away. Right. And we see it. Our country is falling away. From its base roots for what it believes if you want, don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Amen. I know that's a secular song, but it's still just as true. If you don't stand for something, if you don't stand up and say, I'm a Christian, I'm, I stand before God, I'm going to be, and I also want you to understand, we're going to answer for what we say and for what we do yes. and for what we don't say right. and for what we don't do. Right. Now, I'll get off that horse for just a minute. I'm going to take something else, something else more in my heart. Do y'all understand, and why we should edify each other is, that every one of us is a miracle. That's right. We are. Amen. Amen. Think about Amen. what it took to get us here. Right. What all we've gone through. And believe it or not, a lot of us have a lot more in common than we know. Mm -hmm. And if we will look for the unity, mm -hmm. if we'll look for the good in each other, and if we'll look how we can help each other, we will edify each other. And then most importantly... <laughs> We will glorify God. Amen. We'll have those cups turned up and we'll leave this church saying, Man, I can't wait to get back. Why did we have Amen. to leave? Amen. And if, if Brother Carl has to run over, I'm sorry. If you're being inspired, but I'll tell you right now, I feel the Holy Spirit today. Yes. I feel good in the Lord. I'm so glad Amen. that I got to be here. But yes. I'm going to tell y'all, and I'm not trying to, I'm not asking for pity or anything else, but Wednesday I'm feeling terrible. I got some medication that I hadn't had in almost a year. And it, it, it still affects me now. I don't feel right. I feel a little fuzzy in my head. I'm forgetting stuff. But anyway, that's, it'll wear out. It's just the medicine. But I want to tell you something else. I thank God for that medicine because I can stand here. Now, I'm not, I know this is God's power. But I want to tell you all something else too, though. We need to listen to God Amen. and Jesus in all of our aspects of our life. I was going to doctors. And I was, I was listening to them, and I was trying to do what they told me to. But something said, son, they're not doing right. They're not helping you. I listened to Sister, Brother Carl, and I listened to Sister Wing, Brother Milton, Sister Juanita. They all said, go to Dr. Roberts. They're all talking good about Dr. Roberts. Again, 
and I prayed about it. Went to see him, and I'll tell you all right now. He he told me the truth. Yeah. It wasn't what I wanted to hear, but he told me the truth. They had kept telling me, oh, we'll build that phone up. We'll build that phone up. We'll build that phone up. They never would tell me the facts. The fact was I was too heavy. That's right. I mean, that's the truth. I yeah. mean, y'all know it, I know it. But he sat down and said, you can do one, we can do two things. We can either build that phone up, or we can uh, uh, have you lose weight. And he said, it's going to be a whole lot easier to lose the weight. And I've been working at it, and I'm thankful for that. So I want you to understand, each and every one of you are little miracles. Right. We are miracles. The fact Amen. that we're allowed to breathe, Amen. we have this air to breathe. God made the plan for us to live on this planet. He also made the plan of salvation. It's truly perfect. We don't have to go anywhere else. We don't have to go before high priests and everybody else. You can sit right there and confess your sins and be just as safe as if you're in the biggest church there is. You can do it in your car. You can do it anywhere. But please, let's edify each other. Let's beat each, each other up. Yes, amen. Paul was very familiar with this problem in the new church. That was 2,000 years ago. You know what? We still have the same problem in today's church. Right. We may think we're all sophisticated. Yeah. We've got communication. We can put it out on the air. We can call each other. We can talk to each other when we're driving down the road. We still got the same problem. Right. It's that wagging tongue. Amen. It is the smallest Amen. member and can do the most damage. James tells us that repeatedly. Right. The smallest member does the most damage. And if you can't say something good about somebody, I was taught don't say nothing at all. Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. We need to get back to some of those old-fashioned, old fogey, old, old relic mm -hmm. beliefs, especially in the Word of God. Like I said, I was told I was a relic because I was still preaching the blood. I was told that I was a solid house preacher because I was preaching the blood. But I'm going to tell you right now, without the blood, I wouldn't be here. Amen. That's another miracle. Amen. That God chose the blood of His Amen. Son, the perfect sacrifice, to wash away my sins. Amen. They are remitted of. They'll never be brought up again. They're not carried over. They're gone because of that precious blood. And that's a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to close with this. Oh, one other thing, too. Brother Bill said something about 3,000 people in that Walmart. That's how many people was killed on 9-11, 3,000 people. The have been in excess of 9,000 people died because of from lung diseases, from, from things that happened to them that didn't die that day. That's how easy you can destroy something. Right. That's how fragile life is. We need to remember that we are a miracle. We need to remember that we can glorify God in our lives daily. Right. It's not just a Sunday thing. It's not when you get out of those doors you can start talking about your neighbor or talking about your friends. You need to live it 24-7 because Christ is here 24-7. And I tell you what, you may think what you're saying, somebody else may not hear it. I'm going to tell you right now, the Lord hears it. Amen. And the Lord knows. And you will be held accountable for it. Amen. Like I said, it's easy to tear down. Very hard to build up. I'm going to read one quick thing. It's 1 Thessalonians 5. I'm going to start with verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. Together means unify. Right. Or, uh, and edify one another. Even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them that are very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, and this is what I was going to tell you about why y'all can, why y'all have to give me special understanding. Warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded. I'm feeble-minded. So comfort me. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. I'm going to leave y'all with that. I'm, uh, the Lord laid this on my heart. There's, there's. People, we don't need backbiting. We don't need people tearing each other down. Amen. We need to be here Amen. as a family and lift each other up, edify each other, <coughs> and trust each other, and believe each other, and support each other. Amen. Thank you, Brother Carl. Thank you, Brother Dion. <laughs> well, I didn't know what Brother Dion was going to say, but I agree with him 100%. Yes. I tell you what, it's very easy tear someone down. And the thing about it is, and you probably can witness, have been a witness to it somewhere, 
but someone can just use a few words sometimes and just absolutely destroy someone. Absolutely destroy them. And ruin their reputation. And uh, because there's some people going to believe everything you get. people say, don't make whatever what it is. And we need to be real careful. Real careful. And especially, especially if we can't talk to you face to face. You know, that's that's the problem. That's the problem. You go and you whisper. And you know, did you know the Bible talks about whispering? I'm talking about, I'm talking about whispering. Backbiting and whispering. It says it in, it's in the same chapter that uh, homosexuality is in. Same chapter where it said God give more a reprobate mind. People that does such things. And uh, so we need to be real careful uh, how we use our word, how we choose them. I'm not telling you that I've been perfect in mind. I can tell you one thing, I've learned a whole lot. I've learned that we need to love and exalt and lift them up. We need not make a lie out of something to just lift someone up. That's not what we're talking about at all. We're, you know, but we need not try to talk tear people down. If we've got a problem, we need to go to those people and talk to them. If they've got a problem, if they've got a problem with me, then they need to come to me. If they've got a problem with you, they really need to come with you. They don't need to go bound back by backstabbing and all of these things uh, that we see. Now, the thing about this is, this is uh, some prophecy, uh, if you call it prophecy, from the old Apostle Paul, and Brother Dion did not know, and, and I did not know, but he did not know what I was going to be talking to you about this morning. And it's the third chapter of 2 Timothy. Uh, it's a scripture that I've used many times. And I'll no doubt use many more times because it talks about the last days. Now, there are some, lots of signs concerning the last days. But what we get to thinking about signs, and we want to talk about wars and rumors of wars, that's part of it. We want to talk about those kind of things. But the character of man, Jesus told us about the end days, the last days. And what he said about it over there was that because iniquity abound as sin. Because sin will be on the increase, the love of many shall wax cold. But if you endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You find that in the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew and about the 11th verse, I think. But uh, uh, yes, 11. Well, it says, many, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. That's Matthew 24, the 11th verse through the 13th. Now, I just wanted to touch on that before I got over into 2 Timothy, the third chapter, because of the fact that uh, when, we, when we look at what Jesus said, Paul kind of backs it up. Because we're talking about, he, he talked about wars and rumors of war. He's talking about uh, hatred, which we're going to say something about this morning. Uh, he talked about all these kind of things, but he did say then, remember, because iniquity abound, or because sin will be on the increase. Uh, did you know that people today can tear people down and, and never feel bad about it at all? Just, I tell you, I've got too many things on this book. Okay? <clears throat> but uh, they, they can do that very easy. I mean, very easy. But we need to uh, think about other people when we say things uh, like we say, if we're not careful, we'll do more damage than we'll ever do good. So looking at 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and I've been here before, some of you may have heard me, but I guarantee you I've never covered the depth of it because there's, I could just wrap the whole thing up in these few verses of Scripture. But uh, uh, what I want to do is begin reading with the first verse, and we're going to talk some about these Fourth, fourth one, but we'll probably talk about them all. And uh, if we have to have time, just won't be able to get them to the depth that's there. But here's the way it reads. Also Paul's teaching, talking to a young preacher in the third chapter of Timothy, the second Timothy, and it says, This know. Now, I, I'm going to stop right there. I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm bad about doing that, but I, I tell you what, I think so many times we overlook uh, some things that's very important. Paul said, this know. In other words, I want you to have knowledge of this. I want you to know what's going to happen. So, 
it's important that we read, read, use the whole scripture, the whole verses. And all. So this know also that in the last days peerless times shall come. Or we could say troublesome times be the same teaching. Now I'm sure this morning as I stand before you that you can relate to troublesome times because we're right in the middle of it. We're right in troublesome times. We, we're seeing things happen today that uh, that actually have never seen before in our time or in, 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 the, uh, uh, in the United States for sure. We are seeing things happen. There is no respect uh, of people of their lives and what they're doing. They take and women can kill their own children and never it look, never look like they're even uh, sorry about it. I, have you watched some of those? Okay, kill their own children. Now, the Bible teaches that this is not natural. This is just not natural. This is plum heathen type stuff, killing their own children. But any, I know also that in the last day, peerless times shall come. Now, how are we going to know this? For men shall be lovers of their own self. Lovers of their own self. And now, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I want you to pay attention to it because there's so many things that I don't have time to get over. But people are lovers today of their own self. Covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Unthankful and unholy. Now, I can preach on either one of those. I can preach an hour. Easy, easy enough. But what I want to show you is this. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, you ever know of any of them? False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Now I can tell you exactly why sometimes in religions and churches, uh, I can tell you why they backbite. Because they despise those that are good. They, they're jealous. A lot of times ain't nothing but jealousy. They despise what others are doing because it's good. It's the easy, you know, we, we want to condemn good. But if they spend as much time <coughs> condemning bad as they could uh, condemning good, it'd be a whole lot better world, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Okay, so let's look a little further now. Notice what it says. Traitors. Traitors. We think of traitors as those that deserts the, in the army. That's where I used to think a traitor was. But a traitor is anyone that's supposed to be with you, supposed to be standing side by side. You know, we're working together, and yet all the time, they're back here backstabbing. They're traitors on what you're supposed to be doing. Okay? They, they, and and they, they don't stand for the same thing. They back up on you. Okay? Uh, and I don't know of anything that I think is any worse, and this is making me talking now, but I don't. If someone that says, Boy, I sure love you. <laughs> you know, I, I really appreciate you. And then while, while they're, I used to say, they, they want to hug you, kiss you, and stab you all at the same time. <laughs> now, that's pretty bad. Yeah. If they're going <clears> to <throat> if, if do that, I don't want them stabbing me. You see it all the time, don't you? Yes, Amen. Exactly but exactly. But that ain't the way it's supposed to be. That's not the way it's supposed to be at all. We're supposed to love one another. <laughs> and love goes deeper than that. Yeah. I can tell you it does. Yeah. Love will even cause you to forgive others when they've done you wrong. Amen. 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 That's what love will do. So what I'm trying to say is this, people. I'm trying to tell you that we're living in the last days and all these things that we see happening around is, is the condition of the last days like we've seen the last 24 hours, last 30 hours, whatever. We, we know it ain't nothing but hatred. Hatred is what it is. They hate someone else because of who they are or what they stand for. Right? Well, this talks about that too. Listen to what it says here. Let me show you. They're traitors, they're heady, high-minded, 
They're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but not denying the power thereof from such turn away. They're ever learning and they're ever able to come to the knowledge of truth. Now as James and Jamie withstood Moses, so do they also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobates concerning the faith, and this is where we stand today. They have no feelings uh, for uh, their brother. They have no feelings for others. And they're lovers of self. And they're lovers of things more than they are of mankind. I believe with all my heart that we're living in a time of hatred like had never been before. All over the world. All over the world. Right here in the United States of America. I, I tell you something. I believe if we could call some even 50 years back, and I know 100 years back, and people get up and, and, and try to just destroy others, they'd have had to been reckoned with. They would have been reckoned with in some way or the other. But today they can do it. And something else, today we've got so many more means of doing it. We can do it all, on the media, all over. Get up and destroy people. Try just deliberately lie to give it their way. Love what they're doing and hating what everyone else is doing. You can't, you can't stand. The Bible says a nation that's divided, I cannot stand. Or a house that's divided, cannot stand. A nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. Right. Amen. There's no way, people, that we can continue to go on as a nation. And survive the road we're traveling today. But let me tell you something else. Churches are divided. Amen? Amen. And it don't take but just a little leaven to leaven the whole lump if we're not watchful. If we're not. But if the pastor says something, and that's what I'm doing, and I'll probably get someone will be talking about this now. But I'm going to stand up here and say. That if you're where you are to be with God, you quit your backbiting right. and backstabbing. Did you know what it says a traitor is? According to Webster, you can go look for yourself. It says one who betrays another's trust. Yeah. One who or, uh, one who betrays another's trust or is false to an obligation of duty. Now it says they're they're backstabbers, they're betrayers. They're double crossers, they're double dealers, like Judas, and then they're turncoats. Now I'm going to tell you something. That used to would have been bad to have to say that about someone, but that's what they are. According to the Webster Dictionary, you go look for yourself. You see, I'll tell you something. When we get to the word that we can't trust our fellow man. Because we don't know what they're going to do. They tell you how much you, they enjoy your preaching. How much they love you. How much they're behind you. And there you are. <coughs> but it's not to help you. Many times. They're behind you to stab you along the way. Backstabbers. That's what it says here. Backstabbers. Webster says that's for them. Backbiters. I know what it says over in... Uh, <coughs> Romans, the second chapter down there. Listen, let me see. I'm going to turn over there because that's what we're talking about uh, as this very thing this morning. We need to understand that we can never, we can never, <clears throat> we can never do these things and have God's approval upon them. Okay? That's in the first chapter. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Even as they don't like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Okay, listen now. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covenants, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, <coughs> lignity, whispers. See, did you notice he put whispers in the same category as all these other things? That's what, now I'm talking, this is Bible I'm reading. Same place as others. Whispers. Backbiters. Uh-oh. You thought that was only 
what you heard once in a while now, but no, no, no. Second Romans, the second chapter, I'm reading them from the 28th verse, I'm reading down now to the 29th verse, the last thing he said was whispers, the first thing he says in the 30th verse is backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, bolsters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant, covenant breakers, without natural affection, that's what we read in Paul a ago, before he wrote, and black, unmerciful, now listen, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do it. Do you know that was in the Bible? That ain't all. There's a whole lot more. Oh, I know these preachers that's afraid to preach the gospel, afraid to teach the gospel. They want to pat them on the back. <clears throat> they want to tell them how good they are because they want that dollar. That's fine. But I can tell you one thing. God didn't call me to do that. He called me as, and listen to what the scripture says in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. It says, preach the word. Be instant in season and out. Reprove. Correct. With all long-suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, they will not endure sound doctrine. But they will heap themselves together teachers having itchy ears. And will... <coughs> Not continue in the faith, but they will be turned to fables, storytelling. Just, you know, just fairy tales, storytelling. But not the truth. You know why? Because the truth does hurt. Somebody said the truth won't hurt. The truth will hurt. <coughs> it will hear the truth. Because God will take the truth with the Holy Spirit. And people should feel conviction. Now, if the truth don't hurt, and you're doing the things that the truth says you shouldn't do, then let me tell you something. you just got to realize that God will have to judge you for it, because there, notice, there, <clears throat> it says, um, uh, who knowing the judgment of God, they know the judgment of God, it's all here in the book. Knowing the judgment of God, and this is what's been going on all over our world today. Yes, we talk about the media and fake news. And we have fake news in churches too. Amen? Absolutely. Can't tell the truth. They can go around gossiping, whispering, backbiting, all of these things which the Bible is clear on, that you can't do them and be right with God. Okay. Now, I hear people all the time. I hear it all the time. And you probably do too. Maybe not as much as I do because I, being a preacher, and not afraid, not afraid to tell, tell it like it is, but I hear people all the time saying, I don't know who to trust anymore. And they're right. And they're right. It's a shame, but they're right. For people will say one thing and do another behind your back. That's what you call backsteppers. Backbiters. Okay? They'll do these things. We know that we're living in the days when man's word is not worth much. Did you hear what I said? Even those, even those who, even those who will do right, tell the truth, the world doesn't put any value upon that no more. But I can remember the time, and I know some of you can. Remember the time where the word was your bond. Amen. Amen. You shake hands on something, and that was just as good as go. Amen. But who can you trust today? 
We see it in business. We see it all over. Where people have been fro being frauded out of their money. They'll take older people sometimes and just clean them out. Amen? No feelings. No, they don't care. They're past feeling. They're, and, and I'll tell you, they, they've got a reprobate mind. That's all there is to it. Paul said they would be past feeling, giving themselves over to lasciviousness and those kind of things. That's what people are doing. Now you say, preacher, why tell me? You know, if you know this and we know, what are we going to do about it? I tell you what you need to do about it. If you're doing any of those things, quit doing it. And just keep looking up and pressing on. You know, we're, we're going to be in this world, but we don't have to be of the world. Isn't that right? Amen. 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 Love not the world, only do the things that are in the world. And we, we've seen that a while ago in the scripture we read from the book of, of, of 2 Timothy. Remember? Listen to it again right quickly. I don't know where we're at the time, but uh, we're getting, getting up pretty close, looks like. But when we look at 2 Timothy, there in that third chapter, notice what it says. <clears throat> Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, pierced, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Well, that was on my mind, but I don't have time because that's, that's the one in itself, okay? Okay, lovers of, and having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Do what? From such turn away. People can have a form of godliness and have no godliness at all. They can just have the form of it. Just an outward appearance of it. But inwardly, they can be haters. Jesus said that in the last days, it would be brother hating brother. Amen. And with, that goes further than just the natural brother. Amen. See, we think about the natural brother or the natural brother and sister or sister and sister. We're talking about uh, all of these. But what about the brothers in the church? What about the sisters in the church? See, I believe the scripture is being fulfilled. I can remember, even in my <coughs> early ministry, and I, I can recall some of the great services that we had. I can recall where people just love everybody, it seems like. And I mean, they just go that extra mile for them or just whatever. And when one of their brothers or sisters hurt, they hurt. But now, but now, you don't even know who to trust. Because they may tell you they love you. I've had people to tell me as a pastor, Pastor, I, I really love you, and I, I love the way you preach, and I am all of this. And some of the same people have stabbed me in the back. That's the truth. Amen. It's the truth, and, and I and I know some of you know it. Okay, yeah, you do. But I can tell you one thing: the Lord still loves me. Amen. 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 And I'm just going to keep preaching the word, keep telling you the truth, and you can just keep whispering and backbiting. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, keep it up. God's going to judge you. I'm going to judge you. I've been surprised, really, really surprised. And some people, I, I just really have been surprised. And even yet today, some of the same people act like, oh, I really care for you, Pastor. And you know what? Or you can understand this or not, I don't trust them. Because I'm not leaning upon the arms of flesh. But I do trust God. All I need to do is continue on to do God's will.
continue on and try to do the very best I can in preaching the Word and loving my fellow man, telling the truth, even if they get disturbed. Don't say it don't happen. Because I know some of you know it does. But this is the truth now. I love them. Still love them. And I still pray for them. And I will continue to do that. I can't make man do anything. But I can pray for them. That God will help them. And that's what we need to be doing. Instead of backbiting. Instead of gossiping. Doing all these things. Now you may be saying, Preacher, what are you, what are you talking about? See, if you, if you haven't done anything, I'm not talking to you. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, you have, don't worry about it. Amen. Don't worry about it. But if you have, you're guilty. And I'm not talking about just me and others. Some of you have come and gossiped to me about someone else. <laughs> I know you do it. You said bad things that weren't true. Don't you have? So all I can tell you is, hey, you just you need to go to the Lord and talk to Him about it. He can help you with your habits. There you go. Amen. And that is the habit. 